Okay, hello. So now we're looking at um, centrality measures. We're going to talk about positioning nodes inside a network and understanding how they're positioned. And in terms of the way we've been going through our definitions and uh, trying to understand structure of networks and so forth, um, what we've done so far is we talked about you know, uh, basic patterns in networks, degree distributions, path lengths, things like that that characterize networks. Um, we talked a little bit about homophily and the fact that there can be segregation among nodes. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, um, local patterns, things like clustering and uh, you know, related concepts of transitivity. We'll talk a little bit about you know, how, how many of links are actually supported, so they have friends in common and so forth as we go forward in the, in the course. Um, so these are, are things which characterize the network itself. And we'll also be very interested in understanding how different nodes are positioned in the network. And so how we can talk about uh, whether a node is important or not, or influential, or uh, central, powerful, etc. And so the idea of, of how to describe a position in a network, um, you know, there's different aspects of individual characteristics, so some of which we've already talked about, um, you know, just how, how connected it is, how clustered its friends are, um, distance to other nodes, um, but more generally trying to capture centrality, influence, and power are going to, you know, build on, on specific definitions which um, keep track of, of a node's position. So in terms of looking at uh, node's centrality, uh, the most basic measure in just trying to figure out how uh, important a node is or how influential it is and so forth is just how connected it is and that's captured directly by degree. So degree captures some notion of connectedness of a, of a, of a, a node. And you know, in order to make it a, a measure between 0 and 1, we can just keep track of uh, dividing through by n minus 1, the most possible links I could have, and then what fraction of people am I connected to compared to how many I could be connected to. Um, so if we look, you know, for instance, at the uh, Medici, the, the Florentine data we had before. Um, here, what do we see from, from the different families? Um, we see that the Medici here have a degree of 6, um, the Strozzi, degree of 4, Guadagni, degree of 4, Albizzi's, uh, degree of 3. So some of the most important families. The Medici were better connected in terms of having higher degree. It's not an enormous difference, but there's some difference there. Um, so degrees capturing some of what goes on. Um, but degree is actually going to miss a lot of what's going on in, in terms of a network. And, uh, you know, for instance, here, um, degree, uh, you know, node 3 has the same degree as node 1 or node 2. And in some sense, we might, just looking at the network, think of 3 as being less central than uh, some of the other nodes. And how do we capture the fact that you know, degree isn't really getting all of position, it's just saying you know, how big is your local neighborhood. It's not saying where you are positioned in a network or how central you are in a, in a, in a deeper sense. So in order to get at things like centrality, um, we'll have different types of things that we can think about capturing. So what I've done here is sort of break things down into four different categories. And so degree is really just capturing basic connectedness. Another thing we might worry about is how close uh, you are to other nodes. So closeness centrality measures and what we'll look at is in terms of decay is sort of an ease of reaching other nodes. So how far am I on average from other nodes? Um, between this, we talked about very briefly, we'll look at that in a little more detail, the role as an intermediary or a connector. So are, do other pairs of nodes have to go through me in order to reach themselves? That's a very different concept than, than thinking how close I am to somebody else. This is saying is, am I important as a connector of, of other individuals? Um, then there'll be a whole series of influence or prestige or eigenvector kinds of, of notions which will try and capture the idea that you're important if your friends are important. So being well connected is something which depends on the connectedness of one's uh, friends. And so, you know, this is the old, it's not what you know, but who you know. Um, it, it's not necessarily important to have more friends, um, but to have well-positioned friends. And we'll take a look at definitions which capture that. So we'll have sort of four different concepts of, of centrality or power, 
and we'll try and incorporate these into different definitions and see um, you know, the, the differences between these things. And, and one thing to emphasize here, there's lots of different measures and not one, it, it, there's not one which is best in the sense that it dominates. These things are capturing different ideas, different aspects of a position, and some of them are going to be more important in making predictions in one setting than another. And so what we really do in terms of, of using one of these things, it's going to depend very much on the context as to which one was important, most important. Okay, so let's have a look at closeness centrality. So closeness centrality, um, one basic definition of it here is just to uh, look here. This is the length of the shortest path between two nodes I and J. And we can sum across all J. So how far am I away from all the other nodes? And then look at N minus 1 over this. And it keeps track of sort of relative distances to other nodes. And so the idea here is that if, if these are very large numbers, then my closeness centrality is going to be a very small number. Um, so I'm dividing by larger numbers, it makes this small. So how close I am to other people. Um, the closer I am, if, if I'm at distance one from everybody, then this thing normalizes to one, and otherwise it, it's going to become further and further. Um, this scales directly with distance. Um, so twice as, twice as far from everybody makes me half as central. Um, right? So if I double all these things, I'm going to get half. Uh, if I quadruple them, then I'll get a quarter and so forth. So um, it's scaling uh, with the distance. When we look at the closeness centrality back in our uh, Medici uh, data again, um, ignoring the Pucci now because if we add them to everybody and we think of everybody as being infinitely distant from them, then everybody would have closeness centrality of zero. So if we ignore them and just look at the remaining network, then the, the Medici are 14 out of 25, uh, Strozzi 14 out of 32, um, Guadagni 14 out of 26, and so forth. So here, you know, closeness centrality gives us some differentiation between different families. It's not, uh, it, 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 it doesn't sort things enormously. Um, it gives us some feeling for uh, who's further and, and uh, who's closer. Um, another measure that we could use instead is what's known as decay centrality. And this is designed to capture the idea that um, what I, I might get is, is value from being connected or indirectly connected to other nodes. So I might have some value from a friend, a uh, different value from a friend of a friend, and, and so forth. And so the idea is that there's going to be some delta factor which is um, generally less than one and bigger than zero. And the uh, centrality then of a node I under this decay notion is going to be look at the distances to other nodes and raise delta to that power. So if I'm a direct friend, I get a delta. If I'm an indirect friend, distance two from somebody, I get delta squared. Uh, distance three, delta cubed. So if this were 0.5, then we're going to get 0.25 here um, and, and, and so forth, right? 0.125. Um, if this were 0.9, then these numbers would be much closer to each other. If this was you know, 0 0.05, then this would be 0 0.0025 and so forth, and so, so it would scale more uh, dramatically. So as delta becomes near 1, then this just sort of counts all the people that I can reach indirectly. As delta goes close to 0, then this is just going to become degree centrality. All it's going to do is, is really emphasize the direct connections, and all the other ones are going to be much smaller. And then somewhere in between, it's, it's going to weight indirect connections compared to, to direct connections. So you can think of varying this delta as sort of how much do I think of, of it being important to be close to many people, or uh, how much do I get from indirect connections um, of different varying lengths. Okay, so you know here's a network um, with uh, you know uh, sort of like bow tie kind of network here. Um, we've got, you know, node 4 in the middle, node 3 over here, node 1 over here. Uh, basically, there's th uh, three different types of nodes. So nodes 2, uh, 6, and 7 all look like node 1. Node 5 looks like node 3. So we can just keep track of these three nodes and their centralities. Um, if we look at the degree centrality, then node 3 is the, is the most important in some sense. It's got three connections as opposed to two of, for the others. Closeness centrality... 
Um, node 4 is actually the closest, so here it wins out in terms of being able to reach all the other ones in, in shorter paths. Decay centrality depends. If we do 0.5, then these two are, are basically equal to each other. If we raise it to 0.75, then node 4 ends up doing a little better. If we drop it to 0.25 so that more immediate connections matter, then node 3 starts to do better. So you can begin to see that these different uh, definitions are going to give different positions in terms of importance to different nodes, um, depending on which kind of centrality definition you're looking at. Um, you can normalize decay centrality um, by uh, dividing through by um, you know, the, the lowest possible decay you could have to each one of the, each node, so it's n minus 1 times delta is the lowest possible, um, and uh, you know, that gives you sort of the, the numbers um, we looked at um, uh, before. So you know, normalizing, you can get different numbers here in terms of uh, uh, you know, what these numbers would be, so they're just readjusted by a normalization. Okay, so looking back at between the centrality that we looked at before, so now the formal definition of uh, between the centrality um, due to Lynn Freeman. So the idea here is that when we look at um, two nodes I and J, we can keep track of the full number of shortest paths, um, the, short, the number of geodesics between I and J. And then for any K that's not equal to I and J, we can ask what's the number of those shortest paths that k lies on between i and j, right? So if we're looking then for uh, the between the centrality of a node k, we can look at all pairs i and j that aren't equal to k and look at um, what's the number of shortest paths between i and j that k lies on compared to the number of shortest paths that uh, exist between I and J. And then we can normalize that by the number of uh, um, alternative pairs of nodes that we could be considering and um, how, you know, the, the most you could be is, is to have, uh, be on the shortest paths of all of those. So we're going to normalize by there's uh, n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 2 or this is n minus 1 choose 2. Um, other pairs of, of nodes that are out there. Okay, so when we look at that calculation, we're basically saying what's the fraction of shortest paths that K lies on between other nodes? And then when we look at that, um, again, uh, what we saw was that the Medici now have a much higher number than the others, uh, other families um, in terms of their centrality. And uh, between the centrality captures this idea that you know, at this point in time, if other families wanted to, to deal with each other, they might have to go through somebody that they were connected with. So if it's difficult to enforce contracts, then maybe you have to go through somebody you know in order to deal with somebody you don't know. And then uh, the Medici could be powerful intermediaries connecting other families on paths um, uh, between them. So that's a different measure, um, captures different things. And if we go back and look at our bow tie again, um, what do we see now? Well, you know, now between this, these nodes out here, um, they're not uh, connected, uh, connecting anybody in terms of being intermediary. So they get a between this of zero. Um, and here, node four now becomes more prominent. Um, it's really a, a, an important path connector between all of the nodes on this side and all of the nodes on this side. And so it ends up on 60% uh, of the shortest paths in this network, whereas node 3, for instance, only ends up uh, on 50% uh, of the paths. So, you know, depending on how you're counting these things, different centrality measures um, give you different uh, notions um, and different measures of what's going on, different ideas. Um, we'll, uh, the next topic we'll be looking at is, is looking at eigenvector-based centrality measures, other kinds of measures that are going to capture um, importance of, of nodes and how well they're connected to other nodes.